I'm curious about uh, how, whether carbon dating is factual or it, is it true or is it accurate as a comparison to trying to date um, the Earth? Because some suggest 6,000 or okay, thereabouts yeah. or... Yeah, the question is, how old is the universe? That's pretty much what the question is. And uh, this is a question we get a lot. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at the question and, and just give me a couple minutes on this. How old is the universe? Let me say I'm absolutely certain, Jose, the universe is at least 56 years old. <laughs> I'm going to throw my dad in there. You say 65, my dad's 81, so it's at least that. This is, a, this is a, a situation that Christians, or a question that Christians disagree over. But my point is, is no matter what view you take, you're making assumptions you can't prove. And let me show you why. If you, if you think the earth is old, you're assuming the speed of light has not changed. If the speed of light hasn't changed, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. If it has changed, we don't know how old the universe is. Now, is it a good assumption to say the speed of light has not changed? Yeah, probably. Why? Because if you change the speed of light, you have to change all the other laws of physics with it. You say, well, maybe God did that. Yeah, well, maybe he did, but you're, now you're making an assumption you can't prove, right? How about salt in the ocean? The deposition rate is assumed to be unchanged. The beginning amount of salt and minerals is assumed to be zero. Some folks who think the earth is young have tried to use this to say that the earth is young, but now again, you're making assumptions you can't prove. How about carbon dating, what you brought up, or radioactive dating? The decay rate is assumed to be unchanged. In uranium dating, the beginning amount of lead is assumed to be zero. Now, these may all be good assumptions, but they're just that. They're assumptions. Now, does the Bible teach a young universe? Many Christians will say absolutely yes. Others will say no. Let me ask you guys a question. What does the first verse of the Bible say? In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, when did God create the heavens and the earth? In the beginning. Does it say when? No, it just says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You say, whoa, whoa, whoa. What about the days? Well, the days don't begin to verse 3. In fact, all the days begin with the phrase, and God said, right? If you want to take a real, literal interpretation of Genesis, the heavens and the earth are created before the days ever begin. The days could just be an expression of how God did it. Or it could be an expression of God preparing the heavens and the earth for their use. But the point here is, is that since the initial creation happened before day one, my view is the Bible doesn't say how old the universe is. Now, if you want more on this, I highly recommend you get a book by John Lennox, the Oxford professor. It's called Seven Days That Divide the World. Now, even if you think the days do have something to do with the age of the universe, the word day in Genesis could mean longer periods of time. In fact, it has four possible usages in the first chapter and a half. It could mean 24 hours. It could also mean 12 hours. Why? Because the word says he called, the word yom, he says he called the light day and the darkness night. In that sense, it's 12 hours. It could be a uh, era, a period. Like if I were to say that uh, Peyton Manning was a good quarterback in his day, you wouldn't think he was good for just 24 hours, right? You would think he was, that's an era. And there's a fourth usage I'll get to in a minute. Also, the third day seems to require longer than 24 hours, the growth of vegetation and fruit-bearing plants. Even if you put miracle grow on that stuff, it doesn't grow that quickly. You say, well, maybe God sped it up. Well, now again, you might be right, but you're making assumptions you can't prove. The sixth day seems to require longer than 24 hours. The naming of the animals. In fact, Adam begins to name the animals late in the sixth day. It doesn't seem like he'd have enough time to name them all. There were a lot of animals even in his day. In fact, Brad Stein, a Christian comedian, kind of has a bit on this. He says, when Adam first started naming the animals, he was real creative. He'd see an animal come by and he'd go, Hippopotamus! Another one come by, Rhinoceros! By the end of the day. cow. <laughs> Ox. You know, he's just run out of gas. And here's the fourth usage of the word day. The seventh day is longer because it hasn't ended yet. Do you realize we're in the seventh day right now, according to Hebrews 4? We're still in the seventh day. 
well, that day's longer than 24 hours. Maybe the other day. We just don't know. That God created is more certain than when. Now, we can argue all day about how old the universe is. You could have, have at it. To tell you the truth, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I think the evidence is better it's old, but I could be wrong. That God created is more certain than when. Now, it's the Bible and science don't disagree. What disagrees is some interpretations of the scientific and biblical data. But they're, they agree if interpreted properly, all right? Do not make it a test for orthodoxy. Because I guarantee you, when you get to heaven, God isn't going to say, did you think it was old or young? That's not going to be a question.